How do you, um, I love that. I don't love, but um, it's interesting that you're bringing up the concept of the phone and mm. what the fuck when, <laughs> when they take all of your time. How, there's, I know that this is a huge thing. It's, I want to say, especially within the female population, mm. where we have friends who we stay on the phone with for hours sometimes and you get nothing, zero from the conversation. Mm -hmm. When you first started figuring this out, how did you uh, combat those situations? Did you have a talk with them? Did you just cut them off? How did you first start to, to fix that issue? So I have cut off people before just because I think there's friends for a day, there's friends for a season, and then there's friends for a lifetime. And unfortunately, sometimes we keep those seasonal friends way too long. Maybe she was your friend in, in a college, you were a freshman, and now you're 35 years old, and she probably shouldn't be your friend anymore, and you've extended it. So like actually getting to the point, because it it's not just like one bad toxic thing that happens that you're just like, I don't wanna be friends with you anymore. It's several bad things that have happened. And it kind of just, phase out into the sand like you kind of stop texting each other and it just kind of diminishes so it's actually not like blocking or, or anything like that but it is just like fading away and not even responding and they kind of get the point i have however have had childhood friends that i still keep in contact with even though the conversations can be very draining i know going into the conversation like I could possibly be this person's only close friend right now that they trust. I had a friend recently whose husband passed and I had like a two hour long conversation with her, but I knew going into the conversation that she needs somebody and we've been friends. She's my oldest childhood Jehovah's witness, ex Jehovah's witness friend. And I knew, and, and Ben is just, I was like, why are you talking to her? Why? Are you? And it, it's, it's to the point where, you feel bad and, and you are still friends with her. She has never done anything to me, but every conversation I've had with her, even besides her husband passing has just been like really draining and just give, give, give. She'll ask about me probably like 15 minutes out of the hour long conversation I'll have with her. This wow. time was like I said, two hours. So it, it is a little bit of a, of a, I'm giving, but um, it's, or she's taking from me because I'm, I'm the one who's always like, okay, what's going on here? And then, the thing is to drama seeks more drama. So yeah. usually, usually people that are in this crazy drama filled world, they're going to want to make drama in your world and they're yeah. going to surround themselves with other people with drama. Yeah. So by cutting somebody off that has drama, you're like liberating yourself from so much shit. Yeah. You would be, you'd be blown away. And sure. You can be like, there comes a point where you're you you feel bad about it. You're like, gosh, I've been friends with this person for 20 years. I probably shouldn't like just stop being their friend, but you should. Like yeah. you need to stand up for yourself and trust yourself because you've been saying to yourself, I probably shouldn't be friends with this person for the last five years. Yeah. Like believe, believe yourself. There's a yeah. reason your inner self is saying these things. You shouldn't yeah. be friends with them. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's something that not only I face now, but talking to clients, they feel bad for letting friends go because like I said, they've been friends with them for so long, even though they're not serving them anymore. And I'm not saying every single friend should just be like equal 50, 50. And you guys should just like explode together. But it comes, <laughs> to, the point, it comes to the point where if you're like, if you're doing all these things for your friend, if you're the one who's constantly calling, if you're the ones who's constantly making plans, and she the only time she calls you is to bitch or to talk mm -hmm. about a, a boyfriend or an ex-boyfriend or a certain situation, you need to be like, no, it's it's just not gonna happen. And it, instead of like cutting ties with her, just don't don't respond. That's that's how I, I've done it before. Just don't even like message and it'll just kind of draw out into the sand and fade away. Yeah, a hundred percent. I uh, I've had to do this with with a few people, and um, it I still think about it. It's frustrating sometimes, but that you're a hundred percent right with the amount of drama that you're gonna like release 
is Mm -hmm. so freeing. I can't even, I can't even tell you how many hours, like hours I've spent on the phone with some of these people. And I'm always the helper. So I'm always the one that's like trying to fix and they ask for advice. And I, I go through all the listening to the whole story bit by bit and second by second, give my honest opinion and my honest um, uh, prescription for what I think they should do. And over the years, what became so frustrating for me, you know, as I'm learning, you know, about codependency and empathy, uh, but also just coming to my own of the frustration of asking for my advice like a hundred times and then not taking the advice a hundred times mm-hmm. and then coming back to me with the new drama that just occurred because you didn't listen to my advice mm-hmm. is so frustrating. And, you know, I can actually remember distinctively a few conversations where I literally like, I don't want to say lost it. I didn't like start swearing and freaking out, but literally was just like, I'm not doing this anymore. Like I told them I'm not doing this with you anymore, especially, you know, as I started growing into this uh, persona of being a coach and like helping other people, Mm -hmm. it just looks bad. It just looks bad. If my closest friends are just total drama feeding frenzy beasts, you know, it doesn't align with who I am as a person. And and I think a lot of what individuals need to do is figure out, you know, where they're aligned, what they want, and make sure that your friends are in a similar field as you as far as where you're trying to live. Mm. Mentally, absolutely. 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 Mentally. I, I, I wanted to add something to my last comment too, yeah. with, with greed. I think people that are constantly wanting and taking, they can never have enough. There's never going to be enough. So whether it's like having the biggest house, having the fanciest cars, having the biggest, everything, the the most amount of clothes, there's never going to be an enough. Whereas yeah. somebody who has, who is grateful, you can be fine with the outfit that you're wearing and like, living in a car it's like it's a completely different um different scenario yeah uh, between the the give the giver and the the taker so and then another thing too when i wanted to add with giving when somebody is draining your energy you have that call for one hour and they're taking they're taking they're taking it doesn't make you feel like the best your self-esteem goes down versus the person that just vomited I knew their self-esteem has, is disgusting for me. Like taking, taking, taking is, yeah. yeah. Anyways, I just yeah. thought of that. Too. And a lot of times you're giving compliments. My turn. You're giving them, you're giving them um, validation. So you're taking from you and giving to them. And then a lot of times they're not giving it back to you. Exactly. Hey, I do so want to so touch true. on something. Um, and we're on schedule, so we, we can kind of dive into this. But okay, cool. Um, I don't want to say I disagree with you, because, but I want to hear more on uh, what you just said as far as being comfortable, uh, a person who's not greedy or a person who is greedy wants more and always wants more and is never happy. And then a person who's not is okay living in a car and with the clothes on their back. So yes, I 100% agree with that. But what is your viewpoint as far as just wanting more, but not necessarily from a greedy standpoint? Hmm. I, I, I would have to ask, like, what more is it that you want? There, well, there, I think I mean, there's a difference between like because I view I view more as for instance if we're talking monetary value, um, mm-hmm. when I think more, I think I think fancy your car, fancy your house, fancy your clothes. Okay, so that's what you were kind of talking about. However, money doesn't just buy you cars and houses no. and clothes; it also buys you freedom. Absolutely. So I think that's a completely different thing. 
I okay. think money money is a beautiful energy that you can actually put toward good or evil. And I think making money is a beautiful thing. And I think that it's a necessary, it's a necessary evil. I mean, yeah. it's something that as, as a Jehovah's Witness, we were taught to kind of hate money. Yeah. So I've, I have tried to shift my, my mindset when it comes to uh, actually uh, we had clients that say, I love making money. So I'm, I'm trying to harness that kind of energy. Like I love making money to the point where you just said to actually create the freedom that I want. Cause I've been able to travel for the last seven months to go to five different countries. I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have the, the means to. Exactly. But does, does that mean that I want to have a 5,000 square foot home and a, a Rolls Royce in my dress? No, like I, I don't need a Louis Vuitton um, new shoes or uh, crazy purses and all that stuff. So there's, there's, a, there's a different, I think money buys freedom, but money also creates opportunities. Yeah. Opportunities that you can't get if you're not earning money. Cause yeah. you can't, you can't create, like, let's be honest, to make your business even more advanced, more better, you'd have to take courses, you're going to have to take different kind of things to make it a big, bigger and better opportunities. But you're doing that because you can help more people if you had a bigger and better uh, way of coaching. Because exactly. if you if you're a very small company and a very and you can only help so many people and you can only do so much. But if you have lots of education, if you have other people behind you, that all can make it so much more possible for you to help more people. So absolutely money is, is, can be a very beautiful thing. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify because a lot of times, and especially if, you know, talking to people who are more religious, um, a lot of times money is viewed as, you know, when you start talking about money or, um, I guess kind of not having a humble viewpoint on it, mm. People are kind of um, nudged the wrong way. And I feel as if that's unfair because the things that I want to do in my life and create in my life to give back needs money. It Absolutely. does. It needs money Absolutely. Like, you know, to be able to create the retreats that I'm envisioning or opening up a home for women who are um, uh, enduring narcissistic abuse. What, how am I going to be able to manufacture these dreams and these desires without money? And so it's important to make sure that greed isn't associated with money because it's not just money. It's what you're doing with the money and it's the actions and the energy, like you mm -hmm. said, that go along. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Greed can can come to everything. I mean, you can be greedy with your food and just be a binge eater if you want it to be or with anything. You can just have way too much of something and just yeah. be greedy about that. Like I need to have every single pan that Calphalon makes because I just love that brand and I I just I want it. Like yeah. for me that's like do you, but do you really need it? Yeah. It, it's I bet for me um the that just there's no cap yeah and but with like i said with money it's it's a completely different it can go both ways it can exactly. be like create freedom but then it can also create this like narcissistic kind of energy that is just very toxic exactly and exactly. like uh like my, um your father he he showed you love with acts of services my father showed me love with money so he showed us love by buying us things, by providing us a nice house, by buying all the things we wanted. So that was his way of showing us money. So it wasn't at all a negative way, I would say, but it was that that's literally like how I only see how my father ever showed us love. And he's his emotions are all shut off because of his childhood. But yeah, that's a whole nother story. And, and in my culture, in my Middle Eastern culture, that's a very common thing for the men to be very prideful with the money. And like, this is how I'm going to show love to my family because I'm, this is how my father and my grandfather have done it. They worked really hard and they provided and that's all we're good for. That's all yeah. the men are good for is making the money and getting all the family needs and necessities. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Um, 
So yeah, I uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that answer, and I appreciate where this where that conversation went. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, coming from the background that I came from religiously, and then the narcissistic relationship that I endured, it was really tough for me because I needed money to get out, mm -hmm. and fighting that deep, you know, unconscious feeling of being undeserving of having an abundant amount of money felt weird. It felt weird. I didn't feel like I needed it. Like, do I really need money? Can't I just sit here and just be complacent with the life that I have now? And I had to make a, a real hard decision on being okay with making money to leave, even though I wasn't being beat, even though my life wasn't being threatened, even though I could have lived like that for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And and I distinctly remember a cognitive dissidence between being okay with creating more wealth for myself and still being a good person. That was really tough for me. That was really tough for me. And you know, I I have to continue to remind myself that money is good. It is good. Um, it's not, it's, it becomes bad when you're doing things that, um, not when you're not giving back or when you're doing things that aren't with the money that aren't good, you know? Uh, and essentially money makes you more of who you are. So if you're already like some psycho crazy person that spends money frivolously, even before you were making a hundred grand a year or something like that, you're going to, the more money you make, the more money you're going to spend. Yeah. And it doesn't even matter. So if you're already somebody who saves or who budget shops, you're just going to be, you're going to allow yourself to buy nicer things on occasion, but you're going to yeah. save a lot of your money too. So it, it's not like money changes people. No, it actually makes you more of who you are. So if yeah. you, yeah, just, just remember that. Yeah. A hundred percent.